Marchin Tosh. Hello, happy Marchin Tosh 2022. This is Eric from Eric's Edge, and I recently did a hypercard video where I described how Wordle would work as a hypercard application. And I realized when I did that video that there's there's way too much material to cover about hypercard programming in a single video. So I decided to put together a course and it's gonna end up running pretty long. There's gonna be lots of sessions. So it's not just gonna be a March and Tosh 2022 thing. Hopefully I can get it done before March and Tosh 2023, but we'll see. Gonna start off with the first module or the zeroth module, and that is the course syllabus. So, welcome to Marchintosh. Like I said before, so what is Marchintosh? Marchintosh is a month-long celebration of all things classical Mar uh, Macintosh. Uh, Marchintosh is about retro computing with your Macintosh computers. Most of the time, that's a, the 68K kind of uh, old-school Macintoshes, but now with the... Uh, the new Macs that are coming out from Apple, uh, the Intel Macs really are vintage now, so you could include those. Anyway, so who can participate in Marchintosh? Uh, anyone, anywhere can participate. You can create a video, do a photo diary, podcast, blog post. Um, you could do a review of other Marchintosh content and what you thought of it. Um, there's there's any number of things that anybody could do to participate. And we want you to use the events theme, artwork, and the hashtag Marchintosh2022 just so that everybody else can find your stuff and uh, so we can spread the love. So getting back to the course, what are my expectations of this course? Um, it's going to take a long time to create, you know, but I really love hypercard programming, so that's going to be fun. Uh, the course is geared towards non-programmers. A lot of people learned how to program in a Macintosh by getting started with HyperCard. So if you were one of those people that played around with HyperCard when you were a kid and you, you kind of miss it, this course is for you. Programmers could be interested in HyperCard too. Um, this course will cover non-programming and uh things that programmers would understand. So I, I really want to invite you to uh, give me your feedback and criticism of the course. I can improve it as I go along, and I'd like to, like to learn from you as well. Um, I will have fun doing this. I really enjoy HyperCard, and so I think I'll have a lot of fun creating this, and I hope that you'll have fun with it too. So what are you going to need? To do this well you're going to need a macintosh computer uh, one of the 68k macintoshes would be best um, like a macintosh plus which would probably be the the bare minimum for this any of the 68k macintoshes would do if you don't have one of those you can use one of the emulators um, and those work pretty well too uh, now go over that you're also going to need hypercard 2.4.1 that's the version that I'm using for this. Uh, there were several released. This is the one that I happen to uh, prefer, so that's what the course is built on. You can find it at macintoshgarden.org. So you just have to search for hypercard-241, you'll find it. And then uh, everything in this course is based on a stock installation of hypercard. I'm not gonna be covering things like uh, XCMD, external commands and functions and you know, intense programming with uh, extra add-ons and things like that. It's going to be straight up just hypercard. So the next thing you need to do is you're going to have to install hypercard on a 68k Macintosh. So what does that mean? You you need a 68,000 CPU or better. Um, 68,000 is going to be a little slow, but it'll work. You need at least two megabytes of RAM. Hypercard out of the box uses uh, one megabyte. Uh, it really should be set to 1200 or 1500. 
if you want any kind of decent performance, you're going to have to have at least two megabytes. Uh, four would be better, of course. You need system 6.0.1 or greater. I happen to use 7.6.1. And there's several ways that you can get HyperCard on your Macintosh. And honestly, I think the easiest way to do it is to get a blue SCSI drive. And you can get one that connects to your external SCSI port on your Mac. Or if you're um, you know, technically inclined, you can install it inside and replace a hard drive if you've you know, got a dead hard drive or something in a Mac. But it makes it really easy to just move files to an, an SD card and get them on your Macintosh. Um, there's floppy, uh, a floppy emulator you can use. Uh, I think it's called Floppy EMU to get files to your Mac. You know, there's a couple of different options. Uh, Ron from Ron's Computer Videos has a great video explaining how to do this, how to set up a, a blue SCSI. So, and you can find his video here. So you could also install an emulator. Uh, Mini VMAC is probably the easiest emulator to set up and run. Um, it's very uh, simple to just install and get working. It simulates, uh, you know, a Macintosh Plus. You can configure it for four megabytes of RAM, and uh, it's got a drag and drop feature, so that you can just drag files over to it and drop it. Makes it really easy. Uh, Basilisk 2 works too, but I found that it's a little slow when it executes visual effects in HyperCard. Could be a little frustrating, but if you've already got Basilisk 2, uh, there's no reason why you can't use it. Uh, Sheep Shaver. Heard that it works great. Don't really know anything about it. I focus on the 68K hardware, so, um, but it probably works just fine. And then there's also PCE Mac Plus, and that is a JavaScript based emulator that is the one that is used by archive.org. If you've ever gone to archive.org and looked up HyperCard, they've got over 3,000. Uh, HyperCard stacks and they use the browser-based emulator to run them so you can actually go experiment and play around with HyperCard stacks right in your browser um, but you can also install it locally and set it up but it's a little tedious to get going so I, I recommend mini VMAC and that's just the easiest way to get in um, the Macintosh librarian has a great video that explains how to emulate a classic Mac with Basilisk 2 and much of what she goes over is applicable to Mini VMAC. So you can find her video here. There's plenty of other tutorials and things out there. I'm not going to go over all, all the idiosyncrasies of setting up an emulator, but should be able to find that. Okay, so now you have HyperCard installed. Welcome to HyperCard. So we're going to get started. I'm just going to go over the course outline in this video. And one of the things that you're going to find with HyperCard is that you actually learn how to use HyperCard without any programming initially. You need to under, have that underlying understanding of how HyperCard is organized and how the applications function so that you can do the programming the right way. With that, let's uh, go on to the next slide. So the part one is going to cover browsing and typing. So there's different levels of uh, access in HyperCard. And the first one you encounter is just using the stacks that are there. Stacks are what are known as uh, HyperCard applications, by the way. So that's terminology for that. Um, but you could use HyperCard that way. You could download a stack from archive.org, or you could use just the built-in stacks, the home stack that comes in HyperCard. It's got an address thing in it so that you can track your addresses um, that kind of like a Rolodex kind of a thing so you can actually get in there and use it right away and that's that browser typing level it's kind of the uh, I'm a user and this is what I'm gonna do so we'll cover that part two we start to get into authoring and you might ask why it's not called programming and the reason behind that is that you can actually create simple applications or simple stacks 
that do what you need them to do without even touching the programming aspects. So you could actually build these cards to do things and store information and you know do some simple uh, kinds of uh, tasks and, and create tools for yourself without doing any programming at all. So we'll cover authoring so that you get a good basis in that. Now we get to programming. So one of the challenges of learning to program is that it takes a, quite a bit of time to get from the classic Hello World application. And for those of you that don't know, Hello World is a simple program that just prints out the sentence, Hello World, and does nothing else. And it's like the first entry level program that most people do. Um, but just printing out Hello World doesn't really do much for you. So getting to the next level where you start creating applications that actually solve problems for you and do what you want takes quite a while in a traditional programming environment. Um, with HyperCard, it's kind of flipped around. It's the opposite way. You can do the browsing and the authoring and learn how to do quite a bit with HyperCard and build applications before you touch the programming. You know, it really is how it emphasizes uh, the ease of use for getting into HyperCard. So you'll leverage all the information and the knowledge that you gained in browsing and authoring when you start to do programming. And number four, advanced authoring. So this is where you combine the authoring skills and the programming skills you've got and you add advanced concepts such as how do you handle an error message that comes from uh, a stack? Or how do I use the debugger so that I can walk through my code, my, my programming code, and figure out what's going on with it? So these are more advanced techniques that programmers would use. You'll learn about development shortcuts and some resources that you can use to make authoring easier. Like I said, in archive.org, there's thousands of stacks. A lot of those are geared towards, here's an example of how you can do something like animation. And then you could borrow from that and use it in your stack. One of the things we'll learn is that HyperCard actually supports color uh, in a limited way. Um, I've never actually used it, but I'm gonna learn how to do it for this course because everybody likes a little color and things. Multimedia things like animation, sound, and video. Uh, QuickTime video is actually built into HyperCard, so you can use that. Um, uh, if you saw a video where uh, Mac84, Steve, has this laser disc that would play courseware and stuff, it actually was tied to a HyperCard stack that would run the course for you. So it's an interesting thing that they did with it. And then finally, we're going to cover how to create installable applications that you could you know, put on a disk and give to somebody. They wouldn't even have to have HyperCard on their system. They could just install it like it was a standalone application. And then finally, as a last thing, we're going to look at some existing applications and how they work and pick them apart and see if there's programming techniques and design st strategies that we can borrow from them. You know, for each stack, we'll, we'll really kind of go into the detail of each one. So you can see, this course is going to be quite long, and there's going to be a lot of parts to it. I'll combine things where I can, and I'll rely on techniques and, and tutorials and things from HyperCard. There's, there's a great introduction to HyperCard inside the home stack that comes with the installation. And I suggest you work through that and, and poke around. You'll be at the browsing level when you do that. So I just want to make, make another comment that, you know, Marchintosh and the event logo is a concept and designed by Javier Riviera. And he's got a YouTube channel that's got a lot of stuff on it. I suggest going there and, and taking a look. And, and uh, yep, and again, I'm Eric of Eric's Edge, and this HyperCard authoring and programming uh, course is something that I'm offering to everybody. 
Um, I've got a YouTube channel where you can, well, you're watching it now if you found this video. And you can find me on Twitter at, at Eric John Miller. So feel free to ask me questions. If there's things that I'm covering in the course and you're like, oh, I really wish you would cover this, ask me. I could always add it on. If you're finding it too tedious and boring in a section, please let me know. Um, you know, it's not for everybody. You know, you might go in and do all the browsing, typing, and, and use the stacks and find it really easy to do it, and you want to jump right into the programming part. Um, I do have to kind of do it in, in the direction I'm going with each part, but um, I might be able to go toss out a few things for advanced people while I'm working on the basics. You never know. So please give me feedback. Constructive criticism is always welcome. I welcome feedback and, and criticism. Um, I want to do a really good job. I want to make it fun to do. Um, I want you guys to enjoy it and find out why I think HyperCard is um, the best thing since sliced bread. And I, wished, um, I wish Apple had kept it and kept working on it. Well, anyway... That's all I've got. So welcome to the HyperCard uh, authoring and programming course. And I'll see you in the next video, module one. All right. Thanks, everybody.